Hey Hip Chicks, welcome to my basement. We are deep in the corners of the basement at the sump pump because my basement uh, Ida saga continues. It was a week ago that a tornado hit my community and um, we were without power, many homes were damaged. Um, my sump pump failed because we had the power out and I turned the generator off just for a little while to get some sleep and the basement flooded. So I wanna to talk to you about sump pumps and what you need to know about yours because I found so many women in particular on Facebook over the last week and uh, locally in my community that didn't know enough about their sump pumps, including my next door neighbor. I checked in on my neighbor at the height of the storm and I said, how's your sump pump doing? Is it overflowing? Is it near the top? And she told me she didn't even know where it was. My neighbor is a newly widowed woman. Her husband took care of everything, like so many women, and she just didn't know where it was. He had actually uh, put carpet over it in his weight room in the basement. So she didn't even know which corner of the basement to check. So I went over, I helped her, we assessed it, and we hooked it up to my generator and we, we dropped the water down. Thank God her basement did not flood overnight. Mine did, I would have rather taken the hit than her. But let's learn what we need to know as homeowners about our sump pumps so we can avoid problems down the road. So make sure you subscribe, stay connected. And uh, this is some of the stuff that I teach in my Home Improvement Hero Academy so that I make you smart, capable, and confident homeowners, even in the height of a tornado, so you know what to do. Not every home has a sump pump. Many do, typically, if it's been built within the last probably 40 to 50 years, it has a sump pump system. My house has a sump pump and a French drain, and it's not uncommon to have both, but you could just have one. Now, in this setup, we have a pump. The sump pump pit, as it is called, is about 30 inches deep, and it is buried into the corner of the basement slab. The slab is actually set on a little bit of a pitch, so that the water underneath the cement slab in your basement, there is gravel. And there are big corrugated black tubes that will collect the water from the, just the water table from ground saturation that lays underneath the gravel and the cement slab and it directs the water to the pump. So that as the rain water saturate the ground, the sump pump will fill and then the pump itself will eject the water up the hose, it goes out and into the yard. It's a very simple concept and it works beautifully as long as you have power. There are three kinds of sump pumps. There is the submersible, like the one I have. There's one that is called a pedestal and there's one that is actually water powered and hooked up to the city water pressure so that it can be powered without electricity. When it comes to powering the sump pump, typically they are electrically powered and you can get a battery backup, which is great to have if you are prone to power outages. It can also be run off of a generator with either an extension cord or a 30 amp um, hookup to your circuit breaker. For most sump pump pits, the top is removable and it is not removable in a home that has had radon remediation. That means radon comes from the stones and rock bed underneath your home. So you may have it completely sealed. There should be a small access hole where you could peek into and check the rising water levels in the pump. Now in this case, you see I have a garden hose here in my sump pump. We run our dehumidifier 24 seven to keep the basement dry and it is connected to the dehumidifier and runs right to the sump pump. So people have asked me, what do I have to do to maintain my sump pump? Well, there isn't a whole lot that you need to do except check that it is working. How do you do that? You get a bucket of water, you pour it into the well and you wait for the pump to kick on. It is important that you do check the pit to make sure that there is no debris. When we were cleaning up from all of our carpet mess last week and we were using a shop vac to suck up all the water, I poured it into the sump pump to pitch it outside. I had to skim it with a um, simple fish tank net to get any of the debris out so it didn't clog the pump. Some people may have their laundry set up in the basement and their washing machine will drain to the sump pump. 
and it can either be pitched outside or to the sewer system. So if you do use it for your washing machine outlet, you will need to check and make sure that the pit is clean more often. Now, one of the important things is to have an alarm in your basement to check for water. And this is one mistake that I made because I usually have an alarm down here. I have a little um, water dog alarm, but I had moved it because I used it for a teaching demo. So I did not have the alarm down here, but I'll be honest with you, I don't know that I would have heard that alarm here all the way in my bedroom, which is on the opposite end of the house, two stories up, but water alarms are fantastic so consider getting one you can also get one that ties in with your security system that you'll get an alert on your phone which is a great option now let's head outside to talk about what you need to do out there so we're on the outside end of the sump pump system and the sump pump ejection pipe should be at least 20 feet from the foundation of your house because if it's too close then the water that it is ejecting just finds its way back underground so we're fortunate that we have a, a hill on the back of our house so the water is not just pushed out but it's pushed down so it doesn't tend to come back now we had a lot of water that was collecting here um, from the sump pump putting out water and the dog was playing in it digging in it so we did put some river rock in here to help contain some of the mess and um, it, it has worked really well so make sure that this area is not obstructed that nothing gets in the way of blocking this ejection hose so that you can get all the water away from your house now people have asked how long should a sump pump last typically it will last about 10 years Shh. Mine is 24 years old and it's still original to the house and still works when we have power. Now, what is the typical cost of a new sump pump? A new sump pump itself is about $250 on average and you might pay about $200 to have a plumber replace your old with a new. Now, if you don't have a sump pump pit and you need to have it dug and the system installed, it could be upwards of two, maybe $3,000 depending on your home situation. But in the long haul, it might be really worthwhile to prevent floods at your house. I hope this was really helpful and I hope that you subscribe. In the next few weeks, I'm gonna have more content on a lot of things that happened in our basement. We're gonna talk about the luxury vinyl plank that I will be able to reuse. We will talk about the home inspection insurance process and whether or not I'm using an adjuster and how this all works out. We're gonna talk about the other damages that were done to the basement and how you can also manage generators, what you should choose for your house and how you can manage them more easily in case you are facing some severe weather.